Okay, folks, check it out. I got my boy Kelly Hunter. You guys might know him as the, uh, what is that, the King of Foods? King of Foods. The King of Foods. Listen, he back here, out here, you know, in Las Vegas. Listen, coming all the way back from, uh, what, North Charlotte, Carolina? Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Queen City. Right, right, right. I'm going to say this right now. You guys have seen that thumbnail, so you know what we're doing. We're doing them dino ribs, right? We're going to explain this, give you guys a process, but there's two things that we're going to do that's going to be a little bit different, right? We're going to use these as binders, and these are his products. And this right here is what we're gonna coat you with, right? And if you guys didn't know, Dino Ribs is what? We always say that's brisket on a stick. Let's get it. Okay, folks, so listen, the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna be using my Rectech grill, right? Listen, this is the pellet grill. I'll show you guys the pellets and you know exactly you know what blend I'm using. But first thing I wanna do is I wanna power it up. It's already set for 250 degrees. That's great. Remember, 250 degrees. We're gonna put some time on it. Okay, folks, so listen, as we building up some temp, I'm gonna let my boy right here, Kelly, you know, talk to you guys and let you know, you know, describe what he's doing. I should have put this one over here by me because this is the product that I know. I always use this. Listen, he didn't brought me some more. He didn't brought me like five of these right now, right? I told him to send it. He was like, man, I'm getting on the plane. I was like, okay, save yourself some dollars. You know what I'm saying? But this is what I know. I know he's gonna be using this. Listen, I'm not finna over talk you, bro. You talk to him and let him know what we're doing. Yes, indeed. So the Texas seating is going to be the star of the show. The star of the show. Man, I mean, kosher salt, coarse black pepper, hickory smoked salt, smoked black pepper, granulated garlic, and a tiny, tiny splash of whiskey, bell, brown sugar, dark brown sugar. What it's doing is gonna save you time <laughs> in the cabin and try to figure <laughs> things out. I gotta figure it out all for you. Put that on those, what, what we call them? Oh, we call these, uh, hey, so the real thing is I always say, this is brisket on a stick. Brisket on a stick. Brisket with a handle, brisket with a stick, whatever you want to call it, this right here is going to be fire. Check it out. Okay, so today's blend, I'm going to be using the ultimate blend, right? It's a premium hardwood pellet. Look, it's a combination of white oak, red oak, and hickory. It's 100% natural, and take a look at these right here. Look at that. Okay, so look, here we go. We got two sets right here, right? These are plate ribs, three bone, one, two, three. Big bone, medium bone, is sometimes it's like a, a real small one like that one there. You guys can see it over here. And then this one right here got three of about the same, right? One, two, three. This is what you want to have. It's really not no whole lot of trimming that you do when you're doing uh, beef ribs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you. You see this piece right here? We call that like the silver skin. Let me just see if I can't just get this up. You know what I mean? This stuff right here kind of like just be a little nasty. You know what I mean? And then I'm looking at his uh, content of uh, pepper. And I'm thinking like, oh man, this right here gonna be fire. Now, show them that, talk to them. Yeah, again, that Texas seasoning, this is all you're gonna need right here, sir, to put on either, I don't care if it's doing beef ribs, I don't care if it's steak, brisket, burgers, you name it, this is all you need in your life right here. Yes, sir, we're gonna have a good old time in a minute. Let me ask you this, man. How did somebody from Charlotte, North Carolina, end up making a, a Western, you know, like a Texan style brisket? A Southwestern, you, you know, um, just being a foodie, man. Um, just just being a foodie from the southwest to the midwest to the south to the northeast, you name it. You know, uh, international. I'm just a foodie, and I study food. And right now, you know, uh, Texas, I've always had respect uh, for their barbecue scene. You know, um, and I definitely wanted to in tribute. You know, I wanted to make a seasoning. You know, named Texas, cause um, what a better name. And you know, it's it's really uh, my number one seller, cause it's it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, folks, so look, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get started, right? Now listen, I like to always put it like a binder on just about everything that I do so I can get my seasoning to stick, right? This right here, that Caribbean mustard, you guys are used to seeing me use regular, you know, like ye regular yellow mustard, but this right here is what I use, you know what I mean? Uh, man, look at this right here. And the, the taste is incredible, all right? So we just go ahead and put some on here. You know what I mean? I put it all over. I know some of you guys, if this is new to you, now these are them dino ribs, folks. You wait till you see this final result. Everybody wanna know like, hey, AB, what's happening with them? So a lot of people gonna say, do you take the membrane off? No, I do not. You know what I mean? No, uh, just put a little bit here. I do like the taste of that. This right here, when I use regular mustard, I don't taste it, but when I use this, this is like really like my, my secret ingredient, right? So when I use this right here, this gives me a little bit of a, a flavor profile. You know what I mean? Well worth it, folks. Now, once I got everything coated, like as you see, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. And we're gonna do it two different ways. He's gonna use another one. He's been telling me that's fire, but I want you guys to pay attention just how I go ahead and coat that. Now this part right here, I don't like to see that. Sometimes when you buy it, it can be completely covered. That's the way I like it. This right here, it's okay. You know what I mean? We, obviously it's okay because we ain't got no choice. You know what I mean? But here we go. You know what? I almost did something wrong. Let me go ahead and start on the backside. 
you know what I mean? I just put like a little bit of a light coat, you know what I mean? Just a little bit like that. That's good. Yeah, that looks so pretty. You know what I mean? It do. You got the combination right. Now, you see the edges? Don't forget the edges. You know what I mean? Uh, this is all meat. And this right here at the restaurant will probably cost you, you know what I mean, $28 a pound. It depends on how much we getting it for. You know what I mean? Because we got to put that time on it almost like brisket. You know what I mean? And then this is what you guys will go when you go to the fair and all of that. You want them big ribs? These are it right here. Now remember, folks, that's three bone plate rib. They got a lot of beef ribs. You want to get the right ones. These are the ones that puff up and do that. So if you watch the Flintstones, this is it right here. All right, A.B. Dad, let me ask you this, man. What smell better, man? The Caribbean mustard or that Texas season as far as that aroma? I don't know. You know what? I'm partial to both. <laughs> and seeing how they once you, you know, you put that on there as a binder and then they add this through. It's just, hey, it smell right. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, I, I don't know. I'm trying to see what you finna do with that right there, but go ahead. Man, this Midwest Cowboy is sweet, sticky, and smoky. It's a great binder. This called Midwest is really a Southwest salsa verde, man. Uh, the notes that you're gonna taste will be molasses, brown sugar, but they hit a smokiness, but watch this part, it's sticky. So it's also a great binder, definitely for beef, whether you wanna do some, again, like I mentioned, some burgers, some beef ribs, you name it, but I'm gonna give this a quick bath on both sides. Okay, so look, yeah, you already got it open. Let me just show everybody what it looks like. We already put the first one in there right now, so you guys can see it. Let me swing back. There's the second one, right? And that was in there. Remember the one on the right is the one that he did with the rub that he liked? The one that I like, I did the one with the rub that I like. Also, I went ahead and used that binder, right? Now you guys see this little pan back here? I like to keep a little moisture in there. Now, don't forget, this is the pellet grill. It, it's already monitored for the temperature. I know we let a lot of heat out of here, so we're going to go ahead and close that up. We already at 250. Well, we're going to come back to 250. And guess what, folks? We're going to not even look at these for the first three hours. Okay, folks, so listen, it's been about three and a half hours, right? So this is what I want to show you. I went ahead and put on my gloves, right? So if you look, let me do it this way so you guys can see. I got a cut resistant glove right here, right? This is like a cotton glove. Uh, this one happens to be cut resistant. And then I put my rubber gloves over the top. This helps me when I go to pick up something, you know what I mean, uh, that it doesn't burn my hands. If you guys want to know how everybody be doing that, we all got some kind of insulated glove. But this is like the cheap man's, poor man's, you know, insulated glove. Okay, folks, so look, I got Kelly right here, right? So look, I'm going to have, I'm going to quit calling him Kelly because I go, I always call him Hunter. So listen, we finna open it up. Let's take a look at it and see what it looked like right off the back, right? So let me come on in here. Let's look at these. And before I move these, I just wanna show you. If you look at that, look at how they swell up like that. And then look at the pullback, right? Look at that right there. Now, I want you guys to pay attention because you know you saw that I went ahead and put my gloves on. And before I have them spritz, which I'm gonna explain all that to you, you come back in here. Before I have them do that, I just want you guys to take a look and go ahead and just spray like the edge, right? Just the edge. We don't want to put nothing on the top. We're going to let the rec tech build up his temperature back. Once we get back to 250, I'm going to set another timer for about another hour and a half. See you then. Okay, folks, so look, you got to get yourself one of these meat thermometers, right? Hope you guys can see that right there. Listen, this is my meat thermometer. This is how I know where I'm at in the cooking process. Okay, so look, what you want to do is, this is where the insta read comes in, right? You want to have a meat thermometer, because listen, we want to check the temperature that's on the inside. As you can see, look, that's at 185. That's a little bit higher than I like. I like about 175, but I can tell you when I probe it and, you know, get the temps, it just goes in like butter. But I know we got a long ways to go, so it should look like that. Now we're going to go ahead and get to the wrapping part. Now this part, this part right here is like real crucial, right? So what you gotta do is you wanna wrap it. Notice how I bring it over the top. Then I kinda like just tuck it up a little bit. I wanna get it nice and tight because what we wanna do is make it as hot as possible on the inside. All of that marbleization that's inside of those beef ribs, listen, we wanna just render that down. And that's what gives it, once that's gone, and that right there gives it that, that flavor, folks. Then we just back on the you know grill, same temperature. You know what I mean? I don't want to give you guys a time because all meat is different, right? Meat thermometer, and let's just keep probing it. We want to go to about 202, 203 in all places, and then boom. 
All right, you guys, listen, it didn't gotten late. You know what I mean? The sun has already set. So you guys are probably gonna ask like, hey, how long was that? We really don't do that. It's all in this right here. Remember, we checked it, we wrapped it. We wanted to just push through with any type of stall that it had. And we want to take this and let it go to about 202 degrees. So if you guys pay attention, look right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see a bunch of holes. That's where I've been probing it, you know, just checking it. It had got up to 202 degrees, you know, and that's when we pulled it out. We brought it in inside and right now we're going to let it rest. I'm going to let it rest for about, I'm going to say about like 40 minutes. You know what I mean? And after that, then we're going to open this up, cut it and, you know, take some pictures of it, make it the star. You know it's already a star because y'all already seen that thumbnail. Hey, so with that being said, let it rest. All right, so look, go ahead and put that one over there. And now I'm gonna take this one here and open this one up. I'm gonna get all that goodness. Man, it look good. Oh yeah, it smells good too though. Man. Oh, that's fun. Oh, look at that right there, folks. You see that right there? Let me roll this down. But you see that? Mm, mm, mm. Whew. Man, this looks amazing right here. My oh, yeah, gosh, I know y'all want to jump through that. Hey, camera. you know what, man? Bring it a little closer, man. Show them what that is right here. Yeah, dog. We dino ribs. Look man. at that right there. Let me go. I went the wrong way with it, but look mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. right there, folks. All right, All go right. ahead and put that back right over there. Look, let's go ahead and make some room. You know, I think we're gonna do. We finna cut it and give them a real show. We about to get down. All right, you guys, look, now you guys get a chance to see what they look like. You know what I mean? After they rest, haven't quite cut them yet. You guys can see that, but look at that. Nice bark on there, everything nice and set. Okay, folks, so obviously I got myself a slicer. I'll put it right here. This is my own brand of, you know, a slicer right here. This is a 12 inch. Look at that right there. Smoking and grilling with AB. You're gonna need to get yourself one of these because listen, throughout the summer, we're gonna go ahead and, you know, use a lot of slicing. We do a lot of slicing. You can just see how clean this is. Cooked all the way through. You know what I mean? Just releases that bone. I'll just save it right there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a cut. Now, obviously, you know, when you're cutting ribs, you don't wanna hit the bone, right? So you know how I can see it here and I can see it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it just like this. Ooh, man, it cut like butter. Like butter. Like butter. You take it off like that. And then there you go. You guys get a chance to see it. This one right here is the grown man's rib. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Look at that right there, folks. All right, now we finished the one with the Caribbean mustard. Now we're gonna, man, cut this bad boy with that Midwest cowboy. Wow. Man, that thing cut like butter. Wow, wow, wow. Look at this sucker. Mm, that's money right there. Oh, we that's him right there. Okay, fams. So listen, you seen the meat. You see how it comes out. You know what I mean? Uh, just giving you guys a little bit of the technique on how to make them. You know, got to always clean up too. So what I'm going to do is now, it's time for us to get a piece. He been eating on it already. So he'll be able to tell you like it's good and all of that. But I'm going to go ahead and take this piece right here. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You know what I mean? And I'm going to just, ooh, Yes, sir. Look at that right there. Tastes like butter. Mm, look at that right there. Mm. Well, I'll tell you, it's brisket on a stick. It might even be better than brisket. Okay, folks, so listen, showed you guys how we made them. You know what, in my uh, my opinion, I think the uh, beef ribs could have been on a little longer, you know what I mean? Because you could like see inside of the meat, it had that little bit of uh, unrendered fat, you know what I mean? That mean it could have just went a little longer. All the time when you go to right temperature, you know what I mean? Uh, it could have been the right temperature when I probed it there, but maybe somewhere else it wasn't. So I'm gonna say it probably could have took another 45 minutes, but don't trip. Cause now you got all of this beef meat right here. Listen, anytime you put it in a microwave and go ahead and uh, you know heat it up, it'll get it just right. It just might not look the exact same, but it'll be just right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let him wrap it up. Don't forget, this is a uh, Kelly Hunter, King of Foods, representing Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm not finna over talk it. I'm gonna let him take it out. All right, man, just quick, man. That Texas seasoning, that's all we needed. That's all we put on those beef ribs. You know, as far as a binder, that Caribbean mustard, my man, AB Love, and, and or Midwest Cowboy. 
hey, you know, thank you. I had a good old time, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. And then, listen, as always, listen, anybody on the channel, you guys can see it right here. We put his information here. It'll be down in the description box and probably pin it in the number one comment, too. And with that being said, you know what? You know how I do, man. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up like this. If you're new, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and tell. You know what? We out. Peace.